Yani what do you mean by kitap? Yeah, I think that's good enough. Mm -hmm. I like the camera. You want to flip it the other way? Then I got the one. I just wanted to give a bona. So bona knows who, who are in. Oh. It's connected to there. Okay, now. Hello, hello. Can you say something now? Hello, my name is Hi, Manuel. Hi, Abuna. Can you hear me? Uh, Emmanuel, we I can hear you, but I'm not sure if uh, uh, Abuna, Peter can hear you. Uh, yes, okay. I hear you. I hear you guys. Okay. Can I think you can you can start the talk, uh, Good Sabuna. We can hear you now. All right, sounds good. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Not at all. Buna uh, Krulus, would Utsak bless us and pray for us before we start? Please, Abuya, please bless us. Absolutely, Abuya. Thank you so much, Chibuna. So how is everybody doing? Thank you so much for having me. It's uh, it's nice that I get to uh, to see you all like this, even though we're you know a few hundred kilometers apart, but it's like we're right there together. So it's really cool. Uh, wish you all a blessed fast of Saint Mary. May uh, may she be uh, you know watch over us all with her and her mother and 
her blessings. Um, absolve me, Vuna. Um, so I think, I'm sure most of you are familiar with uh, the prayer of Jabez. If you are, could you say yes or no? The prayer of Jabez, yes. Anybody familiar with it? The Sony Salwa. The Sony Salwa? Um, great. Anybody else? Sorry? Mariam? So just two people are familiar with it? So I can't hear you, so I, I'll, I'll assume a couple of us are familiar and some aren't, which is no problem. It's it's actually a great opportunity then because it's a very uh, blessed prayer and a very short one also uh, that you can pray every day. Uh, it's found in the book of First Chronicles, chapter 4. Uh, so I'll just read it uh, to you all. The context is verse 9 and 10. So First Chronicles. Chapter 4, verse 9 and 10, it says, Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in pain. So his name, uh, Jabez, uh, means basically pain, or or uh, he will cause pain. It's almost like a prophetic thing. You know, people usually used to give symbolic names to their children. So maybe his mom saw that he would he would go through pain or would be may cause pain so she called him this name and not to mention that she bore him in pain because it says because i bore him in pain so the pains of labor and jabez called on the god of israel saying so his mother named him this and notice the part that it says he was more honorable than his brothers it says in verse 10 jabez, jabez called on the god of israel saying oh that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory that your hand would be with me that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. Then the chapter goes on and moves on to something totally different. It's like just a, a little spotlight in the middle of chapter 4 of First Chronicles. And yet it has so many beautiful meanings for us. And I'd like us to break it into its pieces. Like It's because of, if you'll notice that it's like he requested a few things. How many things did he did you notice he requested? How many parts are there to his prayer? He prayed for how many things? Did you notice? Is it better that I just go on without asking questions because of the um, the distance where you're sitting, or should we have like more of a discussion? Pardon? Waiting for their response. I'm so sorry, I can't hear. I heard something, but I didn't hear it make it out. It's okay. Okay. Okay, then just uh, so what's our time, by the way? So it's 9 20. What time do you all just usually finish? We finished uh, 10 to 10. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Okay, sounds great. So I'll just read the prayer again really quick. So, oh, that you would bless me indeed, part one. Enlarge my territory, part two. That your hand would be with me, part three. That you would keep me from evil that I may not cause pain, four. So, so he asked four things from the Lord. Um, if you look carefully in those four things, you can see them in the way the Lord taught the disciples and taught us to pray in, in our Lord's prayer, our Father who art in heaven. So he basically 
requested these four things and they're not a call for material because a lot of people confuse that when they see, you know, it's like a prosperity thing. He's asking for an easy life. He's asking for prosperity. He's asking for material wealth, enlarge my land, enlarge my territory. But in reality, it's a prayer for provision, not for prosperity. There's a big difference between prosperity and provision. Prosperity is just, I want an abundance or an overabundance of things. Provision is I want to have my need, which right away you can think of in the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread. Uh, and in another version, give us this day the, our sufficiency of bread, our sufficiency of bread. Like in Arabic, khubzana kafafana, right? So the Lord teaches us to pray for provision, not for prosperity. And he grants us according to his holy will and what's best for us, uh, especially when we're seeking his will. So this prayer is a prayer of, I want, Lord, your promises to be fulfilled in my life. And I want to fulfill your, your will in my life. Um, St. Paul, when speaking to this point in Philippians 4, he says, in speaking of himself, if you remember in Philippians, he was writing this from prison. And he says, indeed, I have all and abound. I have everything I need and, and more and then some. I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the things sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. So he's thankful for whatever he received as donations, as gifts. And then he says, and my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. So St. Paul is emphasizing this. You can see the link there because he's saying, God shall supply all your need. He'll provide, basically, provision. And according to his riches, because the prosperity is in the hands of the Lord. Because the Lord is rich in great things and wants to lavish those great spiritual gifts on his children. Um, the material, as you know, is secondary. That's why the Lord in Matthew 6 taught us, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. So St. Paul also says in 1 Timothy 6, he says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. So what does that mean? It's not enough to be godly in the sense that I'm a religious person, I am a Christian, I go to church, I pray, I read my Bible, I fast. But it has to be a content life. Contentment won't come from prosperity. I promise you. Contentment will come from trusting in God's provision. And that's why the Lord said, look at the, the birds of the field. Do they, you know, they don't labor for the food and God feeds them. Look at the flowers. They don't toil or spin. But they have way more and they're way more luxurious or rich than Solomon in all his glory. So truly the prayer of Jabez is a reminder to seek God's provision and not to ask for material or prosperity. But to trust in God and be thankful to be content with what the Lord has given you. And that's why St. Paul said, with food and clothing, with these, we shall be satisfied. So you think also the point of his name being Jabez, or he would cause pain. It's almost like he didn't want his name to be a fulfillment in his life or almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy. And that's why he said, Lord, keep me from evil that it may not cause pain. I even, there's a quote from a, an a biblical encyclopedia that says, he seems to have lived in dread that his name would be prophetic. So he prayed about it and God granted his request. He prayed that I don't want my name to characterize who I am. I want to be characterized by you. And that's why, if you notice, our Lord Jesus, when speaking with the disciples and saying, who do people say that I am? He geared them back to when they started saying this, that, and the other. He said, well, who do you say that I am? And it was about him being Christ our God. And it wasn't just being who Jesus is as our Savior. It was about understanding that he is my Christ. He is my God. He is my provider, my Savior. If he can save me from the death of sin, then surely he can provide for my necessities. And, and if I trust in his provision, rather than in self-reliance, uh, I will be truly a much more content person in this, in this difficult world. So Jab uh, his mother bore him in pain, 
His life wasn't easy, and the Lord said so too, that in the world you would have tribulation, but be of good cheer of overcome the world, right? And that's why you see again in the Lord's Prayer the, the points that Jabez prayed for. Um, if we go on again and, and look at the parts of his prayer, you see, so the first one was, uh, let's read it again just to make sure everybody remembers it. It says, Oh, that you would bless me indeed. So he's calling for God's blessing. And notice that it says, and Jabez called on the God of Israel. So the first point here is to remember to acknowledge God. You know, if you remember carefully the, the story where the Lord spoke about the, the Pharisee and the tax collector that went in to pray before God. And it says that the Pharisee spoke to himself. He wasn't talking to God in reality. He was almost uh, preaching to himself about how, quote unquote, good he is in front of God. While the tax collector stood in front of God, beat his chest and saying, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. The Lord Jesus said, truly, it is this tax collector that left justified, not the Pharisee. So Jabez, in starting his prayer, the way it's written in verse 10, he called on the God of Israel. So he knows who he's speaking to. You and I need to remind ourselves, when we pick up our Agbeya, when we pray the Thanksgiving prayer, notice how the church teaches us right away from the get-go. Let us give thanks to who? It's let us give thanks to the beneficent and merciful God, the Father of our Lord, God and Savior, Jesus Christ, for he has covered us and helped us and done all these great things for us. It's understanding, personifying, personalizing your prayer, not that it be about you so much as it is about God. So in other words, it's a sacrifice of praise, right? As we pray in the liturgy, we say a sacrifice of praise. And if you look at Psalm 50, um, the Lord teaches us this. this it's Psalm 50 is a psalm of Asaph, and it says, God the righteous judge is the title of the psalm. And it says in verse 14, offer to God thanksgiving and pay your vows to the Most High. So know who you're thanking. Know who God is. Know who your God is. And then it says, call upon me. So the Lord is saying this to us. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. So you will glorify God when you see his hand in your life. But you have to ask for his hand. And you have to know whose hand you're asking for. The psalm, Psalm 50, again ends with verse 23, which says, whoever offers praise glorifies me. And to him who orders his conduct aright, I will show the salvation of God. So offering praise, a sacrifice of praise, praising God, thanking God, is actually glorifying God. And this will in, encourage you, inspire you to live a holy life or strive to live a holy life, live a life of repentance and, and striving for purity, pursuing holiness and purity. And this will be the gift of that to, to that the reward to that will be the lord showing you his salvation and this is found in psalm 50 50 verse 23 so again jabez starts by saying god the, he called on the god of israel oh that you would bless me indeed so the blessing that he's calling for is not material if you think back you remember jacob wrestling with god in the old testament and he said he, it says that he wrestled with the angel of God. And he wrestled throughout the night. And then the angel of the Lord said, leave me. And Jacob said, I will not leave you until you bless me. What blessing was Jacob looking for? Do you remember? Jacob had pl plenty of material. So it wasn't him asking for more material from God. He was asking for God's blessing to be upon him. That God's grace may kind of like envelop him surround him that he may have grace in the eyes of others particularly in his, the eyes of his brother esau that he was about to meet and just a few moments later he wanted to have grace in the eyes of his brother who was very angry with him just a few years prior and was almost you know at the point of wanting to murder his brother as you know so calling on god's blessing in your life is calling on god's grace to be upon you that you may be enveloped in god's grace that you may that god's grace may surround you uh, and that's why when you leave liturgy or you leave vespers or any of our liturgical services abuna dismisses you by saying now may what remember there's that prayer that is this, the dismissal blessing 
Now may the, what is it? Now may the love of God the Father, the grace of His only begotten Son, our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, the gift and fellowship of the Holy Spirit with you. Go in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. This is, you want this blessing in your life and upon your life. This is how you will uh, be able to go to the next step. The next step of the prayer, so notice again, let me just uh, kind of like do a little parallel to the Lord's Prayer again, as we were speaking about earlier. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. See, there's that praising. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. So look at the next part of Jabez's prayer. Enlarge my territory. So again, enlarging his territory was not about give me more land, more acres, more acreage. It wasn't about I want to have more land to build on. Enlarge my ter territory was thy kingdom come. Uh, in other words, may I be, Lord, an instrument of your kingdom. St. Peter tells us in his second epistle, he says, let, us, let our conduct be worthy of God and let us hasten the coming of the Lord. When he says, thy kingdom come, it's say, being willing to say and wanting to say, you know, come Lord Jesus, hurry up and come back. We're waiting for you. Enlarge my territory. Let me, Lord, I don't know how to preach you, Lord. I don't know how to be your, your faithful witness, Lord. But you know how to use me, Lord, because you created me. So enlarge my territory. May, let me expand to the north, to the south, to the east, to the west. Let me be an instrument of your peace, as the, the famous prayer of Francis of Assisi. Let me, Lord, be uh, an ambassador of you, O Lord Jesus, that I may my territory may be enlarged, that I may win more and more souls for you every single day of my life, that I may stand before you and shine as the stars, as you said to Daniel. Those who, who bring others to Christ, who win souls for Christ, will shine as stars forever and ever. So enlarge my territory. Then he says the third part of his prayer, that your hand would be with me. So in other words, if I rely on myself, if I work alone, my work does not have the true uh, seal of success that I'm looking for. Think back to Joseph in the Old Testament. What does it say? Even though he was a slave or a servant in Potiphar's house and later goes on to prison, it says what? The Lord was with Joseph and he was a successful man, even in prison. The Lord was with Joseph and he was a successful man. That's the part of that your hand would be with me. That Lord, whatever I'm about to do, Lord, let your hand be upon it. Let your blessing be upon it. Because if I try to do this alone, Lord, surely it's not going to succeed. But if your hand is on it, Lord, it's going to succeed. Because it's your blessing, Lord. You're the one, Lord, who is going to supply. You are the one who provides. Again, we're looking for provision from God, not prosperity. And this whole idea of searching for prosperity and material worth, or sorry, or material wealth, will leave us always wanting because we can't be satisfied. Our souls were not meant to be satisfied by physical things. Our souls are spiritual. So something spiritual can only be fulfilled and nourished and satisfied by something spiritual. You cannot be satisfied by something physical. No, much, no matter how much physical you give it, it'll never be satisfied. It will always be left wanting. That's why the Lord Jesus, as we just said earlier, tells us, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Because when you're seeking his kingdom, when you seek his righteousness, you're fulfilled. Think of the Lord speaking uh, to the Samaritan woman. And after the disciples came back and, and they marveled that he spoke with a woman. And then they, they, they wondered if he had eaten. The Lord answered, I have food to eat of which you, of which you do not know. My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. This is, this is the Lord, this is the fulfillment of a, of a Christian, a person walking in their life, striving to walk with Christ in the highway of holiness, as Isaiah calls it. In other words, they're seeking to fulfill the will of God in their lives. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, on earth being my life. I'm just earth. From, from, I'm created from this earth, Lord, but you have taken me from being darkness and you've made me light in the world, as you said through St. Paul to the Ephesians in chapter 5. So the idea of saying, let, let me, Lord, be able to paraphrase your words, Lord, and live according to what you promised, Lord, or Lord, and what you said to the disciples, that you have food to eat of, of which we do not know, that your food is to do the will of him who sent you and to finish his work. 
This is John chapter 4. Later on in John 17, when the Lord is praying for us before his arrest on the eve of Good Friday, the first part, first verse, verse 3 actually of John 17, he says, I have glorified you on the earth. The Lord Jesus speaking to the Father, saying, I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. Wouldn't it be amazing that each and every one of us on the day of our departure from this temporary life can stand before the Lord or in our, in our deathbed or wherever we may be at that point and say, and look up to the sky and say, Lord, I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. St. Paul says, who is sufficient for these things? Who can say these things? None of us are sufficient in and of ourselves to say these things. But again, if we seek the provision of God, by His grace, He will give us to say these words. Not to our glory or to our pride or be, to any credit to us as human beings, but to His credit, to the Holy Spirit working in us. That's why He said when He sends us the Holy Spirit, um, you know, greater works than these you will do because I go to the Father. When I send you the Holy Spirit, you will do greater things than these. So you'll be able to say, I've glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which I've given to, given, given, you have given me to do. When St. Paul ends his last, last letter before his martyrdom in 2 Timothy chapter 4, says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there's laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not only to me, but to all those who have loved his appearing. This is the key, everybody. The key to all of this is loving Jesus. Love your Lord. Love the Lord your God, right? That's the first commandment, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, strength, your, your whole being, and then your neighbor as yourself. That's what all the, all the law and the prophets hang on these, this. So if you look carefully in our Synaxarian, uh, you'll notice very often it says that this saint, this martyr, whoever they may be, she or he departed to the Lord whom they loved. I think it was in this morning's Synaxarian, one of the, one of the three was St. Julieta and St. Jacob uh, Maradai. And I can't remember the last one. Maybe someone attended liturgy today and remembers. But I remember reading it and one of them, uh, it said that, I think it was St. Jacob of Maradai. It says at the end of it, and he departed after his labor on earth. He departed to the Lord whom he loved. See, if you do all of these things out of uh, just, quote-unquote, duty, you're, it's not going to be enough. It has to be the motive, your driving force, the, the, the force that's driving you, inspiring you every day to, to get out of bed and, and do it all over again for the glory of God has to be love for God. Say, so, well, I don't know if I love God that way, or I'm not sure if I have that much love. It's okay. Don't worry. Pray about it. Pray for it. Seek it. Seek it diligently. Persevere in it. Pursue it. The Lord will give it to you gladly. When you pray and say, Lord, I want to love you, Lord. You think the Lord won't answer that prayer? Well, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Sanctify my heart and my life for you, Lord. You think the Lord won't gladly answer those prayers? For sure. If it says, Jabez, just ask these simple requests these four simple requests, and then it just ends with, so God granted him what he requested. That's why later on in the New Testament, the Lord tells us what? How much more will your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Just ask fervently and persistently every morning when you wake up. When you put your feet on the floor and you stand up and you do the sign of the cross and you pray your first Lord's Prayer of the morning, say, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Grant me to love you, Lord. And the Lord will grant you what you request over time. It's a journey. It's a, it's a, it's a, you're journeying into eternity with your Lord. That's why it takes time. That's why the Lord said, by your patience, possess your souls. And that's why he said in the parable of the soils that to the, this will happen to that noble heart, that good soil, uh, those who bear fruit with patience. So be patient and trust the Lord. That's why... Jabez says, bless me indeed, enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, that you would keep me from evil. This is the last part, that you would keep me from evil, that it may not cause pain. So remember we said how his name means he would cause pain or suffering and so on. He doesn't want to be a cause of pain, neither to himself 
by following a sinful life or to those around him or to anyone that might be seeking Jesus and he doesn't want to be a hindrance to that, quote unquote, so to speak. So you and I should take that prayer of Jabez, transplant it, personalize it for us every morning, every day. Repeat it regularly. It's a simple, short prayer filled with jewels and gems, filled with gifts that the Lord wants to give us. So again, that you would keep me from evil. Notice when you go to 1 Peter chapter 1, St. Peter says that we are kept by the power of God. And the Lord Jesus prayed for us in John 17. Remember what he said? He said, Lord, I do not, Father, I do not pray that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. So you and I are in this world together for a period of time that's going to end, but we're not of it. And when we choose every day to say, Lord, I'm in here, I'm in this world, but I'm not of it. I am, my citizenship is in heaven, as St. Paul said to the Philippians chapter 3. Lord, I will be able to enjoy the promise that you've promised Jabez when, when he prayed for it and he granted him his request that you would keep me from evil. So keep me, Lord, from sin. Keep me, Lord, from temptation. Help me, Lord, to make the right decisions. You know how it says in Proverbs, commit your thoughts to the Lord or commit your works to the Lord, sorry, and your thoughts will be established. You'll know which way to, to go. That's why Solomon says in Proverbs 3, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. You'll find your path being directed every day. I'm sure every one of you has experienced not coincidences, but God incidences. That God just, suddenly something, you know, an unexpected phone call. Or you meet someone that you weren't planning to meet on the way to work or school or entering church or on the way out of church or whatever. These are not coincidences. There's no coincidence with God. These are circumstances that the Lord has prepared beforehand and works that he has prepared beforehand that you may do. As St. Paul says to the, to the Ephesians chapter 2. You're called to this, that you may glorify your Lord. That's why the Lord said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. That people may see something that will attract them to the Lord Jesus. Not to you, not to me, but to him. Then you say, I, I want this. I want to have this kind of relationship with you, Lord. I want to have what she has. I want to have what he has but not in a, a sinful, covetous way, like I want to have the car she has or the, the wife he has or the husband she has or the house they own or the profession she has or the bank account or, or the name they have. This is all petty and temporary and none of it is going into the tomb. But I want to have that same fire and zeal for you, Lord, that they have, that I may be with you in eternity. That when you say, Lord, uh, the kingdom of God is within me, that I may find it in there, Lord. And how do I find it in there? By saying, thy kingdom come, thy, that enlarge my territory, that Jabez said, that you may be enthroned in my heart, Lord. That you may be sitting in my heart enthroned. You know, there's, I, re I, re I heard this beautiful kind of like contemplation once about in your heart, there's a throne and a cross. Every day you have the choice either to have Jesus sit on that throne or to be crucified on that cross in your heart. It's your choice. So the decisions you make every day will determine that. If you really want the Lord to be sitting on your throne in your heart, to be enthroned in your heart, then say, Lord, grant that my heart be a little piece of heaven, that you may sit enthroned in my heart, not crucified, You've been crucified already once for me, Lord. You don't need to be crucified again for me, Lord, because I want to crucify my passions. I want to crucify the old man that's in me. I want to deny myself, take up my cross and follow you, Lord, into your kingdom. So that your hand would be with me, that you would keep me from evil, from sin, from temptation, from wrong decisions, from wrong habits, from the wrong crowd, from the wrong group, from the wrong company. As St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, bad company corrupts good habits. So keep me, Lord, from evil, that I may not cause pain, that I may not cause pain to myself by being away from you and wasting life 
to, to remember, as St. Paul said, redeem the time for the days of evil, that it may redeem this time because every minute, every second going by is never going to come back. So that I may not cause pain to myself by wasting time and that I may not cause pain to anyone else around me, my family, my children, my spouse, my parents, my cousins, my siblings, my colleagues, you name it, my friends at work or college or school, that I may not be a cause of pain, but a cause of blessing to those around me. So God granted him what he requested. You see how it's such a simple prayer, very simple to pray, very simple to, to look into. Uh, I, I suggest to you, pray it every day. Pray it every morning, pray it multiple times a day. When Think about that. Why would it be multiple times a day? Because when he says that your hand would be with me, meaning that, that you'd be with me throughout my day, Lord. And that's how we have the beautiful tool of the Agbeya. Even if you're not going to be able, your time won't permit you to pray all seven hours, with all the Psalms and Gospels and litanies and absolutions in them. But you can lift up your heart. Let's say it's lunchtime. It's the sixth hour. It's noon. You can pray the Gospel of the sixth hour or the litanies of the sixth hour or just the Kyrielisons of the sixth hour or the absolution of the sixth hour. Then it's like, you know, 3 p.m. and you're, you're, you're finishing up work. You're about to grab a cup of coffee or something. Just it's three o'clock just look up to the sky and say lord remember me when you come into your kingdom as you remembered uh, the right hand thief demas as you were on the cross at this hour lord you commended your spirit into the hands of the father this hour you can have the hand of the lord with you throughout the, the 24 hour period even when you're sleeping it's amazing when you think of baba Krudlus, like there, you know even in, in there, there are times even when he had to have surgery or when he'd be asleep they would they would hear, and other fathers as well have been known to have been witnessed by doctors and anesthesiologists and so on, that while they're in surgery, you can, they're just reciting the liturgy or reciting the Psalms. This is because by practicing, by practicing the daily Christian walk, a daily prayer life, they become prayer. As it says in Psalm 109, I give, my, 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 I give myself to prayer. In Arabic, it sounds even nicer. I, I am prayer. I give myself to prayer. So it's a beautiful prayer, very easy tool to use. And in conjunction with the Lord's Prayer, you can see the, the, the links with your Agbeya Psalms throughout your hours, throughout the day. A, a Psalm from here, a Gospel from there, a Litany from there. You find yourself walking in the footsteps of Jabez and enjoying uh, having your prayer answered because you're praying for God's uh, promises to be fulfilled in your life that you may basically fulfill the purpose for which God has put you here. You're not sitting there at church in Toronto right now on Wednesday night just to sit there. There's a purpose for you being, being there right now. You're going to get up and go home or, or go to work or or do whatever and get ready for tomorrow and so on. There's a purpose to your life. And that purpose is that you may glorify God on the earth and that you may finish the work which he has given you to do. And that's basically, in summary, what the prayer of Jabez is all about. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much, Abuna. My pleasure, Abuna. My pleasure. Uh, any questions? It's been very quiet. In here. They probably fell asleep in the, in the nice calm air with the uh, crickets chirping in the background. Perfect for a nice nap. Buna can hear me from here. He should be able to hear everybody. Yes, I hear you. I hear you, Buna. And I heard, I think, the Sony Cell was saying we're awake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. I didn't hear anybody else, though. <clears throat> and uh, sorry for troubling you uh, at this hour. And but uh, no trouble at all. Uh, the blessing was all mine. It's 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 wonderful. 
to uh, to to see our, our beloved family in Toronto, and it reminds us that every time we pray uh, liturgy or pray at the altar, we're united again. So this moment is a reminder. You know, when we go to liturgy next time, we'll just remember each other at the altar, and we'll be together. Um, as the mystical body of Christ at the, the Eucharistic table. So uh, may, may God, uh, you know, bless uh, your church and your families, your lives. And um, please remember me in your prayers uh, that we may all uh, be united here and in eternity with the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let's, uh, pray for us, please. I prayed at the beginning. Father Evi, absolve me, Buna. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ, we praise your holy name. and Thank you, Lord, for your, your blessings and for your care and your provision for each and every one of us. We ask you, Lord, to uh, forgive us our, 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 our setbacks and our trespasses, Lord. And we ask you to forgive us when we rely on ourselves rather than rely on you, Lord. And when we look to ourselves rather than look to you, grant us a repentant heart. Uh, grant us to lift our hearts at all times by your grace uh, that we may walk here on earth but not be of it we ask you lord to remember all those who have asked us to pray for them those who have no one to remember them we ask you lord for the salvation of every soul in the world uh, those who are going through pains and sufferings those who have been through plagues and catastrophes throughout the planet lord we ask you to to uh, bless the world with your healing hand that all may glorify you and come to the knowledge of the truth. We ask you, Lord, to grant us to trust you in all things and to submit to your holy will, not grudgingly, but lovingly trusting in your, in your wonderful provision and your fatherhood of each and every one of us. We ask you, Lord, to unite us in your holy and precious name and unite us in your kingdom through the prayers and intercessions of your holy mother. St. Mary, that her blessings and intercessions be with us always. The intercessions and prayers of the great Archangel Michael, the prayers of your beloved apostles, St. Peter and St. Paul, St. Mark, the great evangelist of the land of Egypt, and all your saints, and all the saints of this day. We ask you, Lord, accept us and lift our hearts to you as we pray together. Thankfully, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, with thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you, Uya. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. and. We'll look, for, look forward to seeing also, and hopefully we'll be reunited uh, together soon. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone.